Ever wondered if there are any other differences in focal length between wide-angle and telephoto lenses? And what about zooms and primes? Is the only difference that with the zoom you can change the uh, focal length, but with the prime you cannot? If you are wondering, then you might want to watch this video. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard. I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the business, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. But let's start with some basics first and let's talk about focal length and why we're talking about the crop factor. Even though we're talking about the crop factor, which is uh, 2 with uh, micro four thirds and 1.5 with APS-C cameras. And it's compared to full frame cameras. Why do we talk about crop factor? Because the focal length does not change. A lens is a 25 millimeter lens, no matter what size sensor behind the lens is. The only thing that we use the crop factor is to understand what the angle of view will be when a 25 millimeter lens is put into a micro four thirds camera or 25 millimeter is put into a uh, full frame camera the angle of view will be different. That's why we need to use crop factor, although we don't need to, but we can so that we can understand a bit better what the outcome will be with different lenses on with different sensor sizes. And then what about aperture? Should we use the crop factor too with aperture? Well, the answer is yes and no. Let me explain. Yes, when it comes to depth of field. But that has nothing to do with the sensor size. I will talk about that later. But then if we talk about the exposure, then the answer is no. It doesn't matter if I put the lens that I have now, 25 millimeter f1.2 lens, if I would put that on a, if it was possible to put it on a full frame lens, it will still be 1.2 lens. That doesn't change. And the exposure is exactly the same. Let's next talk about the focal length. What is considered to be a wide angle? What is a standard lens? And what is a telephoto lens? It all depends on your sensor size. A wide angle lens is a lens which uh, focal length is shorter than the diameter of the sensor. So in full frame cameras, a standard lens is a 50 millimeter lens. And I will talk about the standard lenses a bit later. And if a, uh, in a full frame, a lens is, has uh, less than 50 millimeter uh, focal length, then it's called wide angle because it's longer or I mean shorter than the diameter of the sensor. And with the uh, micro four thirds is a, a lens that has shorter focal length than 25 millimeter is considered to be a wide angle lens. And with APS-C sensor, it's around 33 millimeters and, and shorter. Those are called wide angle lenses. And then let's talk about the characteristics of a wide angle lens. And of course, the first thing is that it has a wide angle. It has a wide angle of view. So you see more from the same distance uh, compared to a telephoto lens. That's the first thing. And the second thing is when you're using a wide angle lens, objects that are closer to the lens seems to be a lot bigger than objects that, that are in the back. And that's the characteristics of a wide angle lens. And it's very effective to use that. And that's why when you're using wide angle lens, it's usually really good to have something in the foreground. And then you will have uh, so-called uh, uh, different layers to the image for the eye to wander around the image. If you leave the front totally empty, then you will uh, leave kind of like an empty f uh, uh, feeling of the whole image. And that's, of course, something if you are planning to do, then it's a right thing to do. But always when you make these decisions about composition and using what lens, you need to know what you want. What is your style? What do you want to tell with the image? That's the most important thing. And selection of lenses also has something to do with this because of this, uh, be they behaving a bit differently. The most common uses uh, for wide angle lenses are landscapes, cityscapes and street photography. But that's only the traditional way. Using wide angle lens for portraits is something that you should try. But if you do that, 
remember that do not have your subject or your model, your, your, your person in the image to be in the very close to the edge of the frame because there's always some distortion. And with the wide angle lens portraits, it's also a lot easier to tell a story. You can show the surroundings and that will add up to your subject. With the portraits, always remember that the person that you're photographing is your center of interest. So have the image so that the viewer sees the person first and then start wandering around about the story. That way your image will be a lot more powerful. Let's next talk about standard lenses, which is, as I said in the beginning, about 25 millimeter in micro four thirds and uh, uh, 33 millimeter in APS-C and 50 millimeters in a full frame camera. And the characteristics of a standard lens is that the perspective is very close the way a human eye sees the perspective. The proportions in the front and in the back are about the same. You know, they, they, they look natural. The only thing is that we can see a bit wider than a uh, standard lens, which has a bit narrower depth of uh, the angle of view. And I think standard lens is one of those lenses that every photographer should have in their bag because it's very versatile lens. It can be used with almost any genre in photography. So that if you don't have a standard lens or if you have a zoom, which I will talk a bit later, try to use the 25 millimeter if you have a uh, micro four thirds camera and see how the camera sees the world with that focal length. And what's an interesting thing that when you bought a camera in a film era, the standard lens was your kit lens on those cameras. When I bought my first camera, it had the kit lens as a 50 millimeter lens. And that has changed. Now usually the kit lens is a zoom lens. Telephoto lenses are lenses that have focal length more than the diameter of your sensor. So everything above 25 millimeter in micro four thirds world is considered to be a telephoto lens. And let's say that like a 75 millimeter is a short telephoto lens, then you have the 300 millimeter uh, lens that is a long telephoto lens. And the characteristics of a uh, telephoto lens is that it will squeeze the perspective. Things that are far away seems to be closer than they actually are. And that's a very effective way to make things more dense, like you see in this photograph. And yes, those who know, it is Easter Road, the home of the Hibernian in Edinburgh. Short telephoto lenses are really great for portraits because it's, it makes a natural perspective. It will squeeze a bit, but not too much. It's, it's usually very nice for portraits. And then long telephoto lenses are commonly used in wildlife and bird photography. But it can also be used in landscapes and cityscapes. It will give you a bit different perspective to the whole area. It will squeeze the perspective and let's say like in the cities, it will make it more crowded and more packed, which could be a very effective uh, thing in your composition and in your story when you're making images. But before we get into depth of field, let me talk about primes and zooms first and the differences between those two type of lenses. Of course, the obvious dif difference is that prime lenses has a fixed focal length and zooms have variable focal lengths. But there are usually some other differences too. And the main difference is the fastest aperture. Prime lenses are usually faster than zoom lenses. Of course, there are some exceptions, but that's in, in general, that's the way it is. And that's why prime lenses are really handy to have just because they are a lot faster. Let's say that you have the kit lens, then a prime lens on the side, a fast prime lens is a really, really wide decision to have for those low light moments, whatever you photograph on your travels, on your free time, whatever it is. A fast prime lens is really a good thing to do or to have. What focal length should you have? Well, that depends on your shooting style and what you are planning on shooting with it. That's, that's uh, the decision that you have to make yourself by uh, learning the characteristics of different types of lenses. Back in the days, it used to be so that professional photographers used prime lenses and amateur used zoom lenses. And the only reason was, uh, actually two reasons. Usually prime lenses were, were really good quality and also fast, but then they were also a lot more expensive than zoom lenses. But nowadays there isn't any big uh, image quality difference. So 
I wouldn't uh, make my decision buying a Prime or Zoom because of the uh, image quality. I would uh, have some other things that uh, I would consider. And I have both Zooms and Primes and I use them, you know, sometimes I need a Zoom and sometimes I need a Prime. It depends on the things that I'm doing. The advantage of a Zoom lens is that you have several lenses in one lens. As I said in the beginning of this video that depth of field has nothing to do with uh, sensor size. There are three things that matters. Focal length, focusing distance and the aperture. So the angle of view is the reason that people think that with micro four thirds you have more depth of field. Because to get the same angle of view, you need a wider lens and wider lenses tend to have or not tend to have, they do have more depth of field with the same aperture and the same focusing distance. That's why we think it's the sensor, but it's not. It's the angle of view. And here are some more videos about lenses. If you are planning on getting a lens, you might want to watch those videos. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.